So the first week is we will be safe. How do I do that? Well, Anthony, one thing we have to keep in mind is that young children are very much concrete learners. Mm -hmm. So even when you tell them, you're safe here, you're loved here, they need to have an actual visceral experience of that. Okay, so what does that look like? Okay. Well, one of the things that I also want to point out to you that we will be safe is also aligned with the district's priority of culturally and linguistically sustaining practices. Oh, that's interesting. So, <clears throat> a system that I find really helpful in organizing the classroom, organizing children, but then also really embodying what we just talked about. Right. What system is it? Uh, it's what I call the pattern system. And basically, all it is <clears throat> is that each child chooses or is given a pattern that suggests their own. Okay, that's interesting. Look at that. Yes. And something that's important to point out is that all the patterns are one color and white. And that's because no matter how big or small the pattern is, whether you have it this size or you blow it up, it remains the same. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't want to have a plaid or a cartoon figure because you want it to, re to remain the same so the kids can easily identify it. Okay? And what's great about this is that all the patterns are different, but they're actually all the same. Oh. Because we all have one. Well, we all have white oh, in our colors. Oh, and so actually, you as a teacher can also choose one for yourself to make okay. it really clear that we're all big. That makes sense. All right. So here's some ways that you can use the pattern system in your classroom. Um, I like to use fabric. And so you can go to a fabric store and get something that is called fat quarters. And what you can do with fabric is you can cover a pillow so that the kids know where to sit during the meeting and where they can lie down for rest. They easily know where to go. And everyone would have their own pattern. Exactly. Oh, that makes sense. <clears throat> and if you wanted to make a pillow, all you have to do is get a piece of wrapping paper that's 24 inches across yep. and 12 inches this way. And you're going to fold it together like this. Sew it down the middle. And then you have a pillow cover for a 12 by 12 pattern. Awesome. So I got this at a Walmart. It's just a, uh, it's like a pad. Yeah, it's a little stick to it. Yes, it's like a camping mattress that you can just cut into how many squares you want. So you tell me you're not someone who knows how to sew. Yeah, I'm not really handy with that. Well, you know, or this might, you might say, this might be a fire hazard in your school. Consider that. Mm -hmm. Not to fret. You can also use a jiffy envelope. Oh. And it's still kind of soft. Yeah, a little, little padding on there. Sure. Interesting. So even if you don't want to use fabric, you can go to Google Images, and you can find different, different patterns like this cut and paste it into a Word document, mm -hmm. save it, so that once everybody has their pattern, you can just print this out onto sticker paper. Oh, that's really clever. Yes. Yeah. Can you see that? And then you can make all kinds of things for their pattern. You can use it to show where their cubby is, mm -hmm. job cards. Like it. You can use those stickers them on like different folders. folders this yeah. is a map folder. This is something I call a save name. So if kids are in the middle of building something or working, they can put it on that so that everyone knows that's what they're working on. They're going to come back to it. I'm liking this system. I know you would. Or here's another save name. Well, this? Oh, it's just a little cone. Color. Yes, you want to put the stuff that you're working on that's with clever. your pattern on it. Like you can put it on clips. And what's the, how would you use this in a classroom? Uh, well, you know, if you wanted to designate jobs of the day or anything that you want to say, these are the folks who are, whose turn it is, mm -hmm. you can cut a little piece like this. And if the kids are taking home things, like say during vacation week, and they can do it like this so they know what's theirs. Yeah, I like it. Here's a great little thing you can use it for. You can get these, thank you, you can get these popsicle sticks. Or, like these are just some people popsicle sticks. You can glue a little piece of it on there. On the first day of school, you can give it to kids to make their.
your own little person. And then when they come back to school the next day, you have little different cans. It says, you put them all in here, I am at home. And then when they come into school, they can move it over. Pretty cool. Or my like favorite. I'm in the bathroom. I'm in the can. <laughs> so Anthony, now we are going to talk about calendars yes. in early childhood. So yeah. I know you've typically seen this kind of calendar. Yes. And typically we say, oh, this is a great way for kids to learn about the time. Counting. Short patterns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Truth of the matter is, this kind of traditional calendar is actually developmentally inappropriate for young children. What do you mean by that? Well, there's been a number of research that talks about, and these are articles that are also on our VPS Early yes. Childhood yep. website, that talk about why calendars specifically are not appropriate for young children. So calendar time for young children, good intentions is not awry. Right. This is about questioning the curriculum, mm -hmm. calendars in early childhood. But the one article that I think is really helpful to think about was research that Doug Clements, the author of Building Blocks. The mathematician. That's right. Mm -hmm. And just recently he did a study for the National Council for Teaching Mathematics and he specifically points out inappropriate use of calendar activities for early childhood. Okay. And he points out that some of the things that conceptually a traditional calendar like this mm -hmm. is not appropriate for. Um, so this kind of calendar is based on a base 7 number system. Mm -hmm. The numbers that we use are base 10. Right, yep. Also, sort of arbitrary, some months are 30, some months are 31, and in February, 28, mm -hmm. sometimes 29 on a leap year. Mm -hmm. And also the way young children think about how numbers increase. Um, they still sort of think of numbers as going up, like in a number line. Right. But when we look at numbers here, they go up, they sweep across, they go back up, and they sweep back across again. Right. That's okay. kind of helpful for when you're learning how to read right. text. Right, sweep them back, yep. Mm -hmm. But not for learning how to but, you know, calendars are a really important tool to help kids think about time. Okay, so what's an appropriate one look like? All right, well, let's take a look. Right. Look, it's made out of some poster, poster board that I found. So something I didn't mention when we first started doing this is a lot of the activities uh, and the materials yeah. that we're going to be sharing with folks is made from all materials that you can find in your basement, you can ask families for. Your classroom, yeah, something right. like that. Yeah. Because we don't want teachers like you going out and buying a whole bunch of like, things mm -hmm. in your classroom. So this is actually a more developmentally appropriate calendar. So some of the things you can notice about this is that there are no numbers on here. Okay. And the only sort of designation of time is what's most important to little kids. What today is, what yesterday was, and what tomorrow is. When you start out, you might just want to put today for our little friends. Um, all the days are color-coded. So yes, kids will learn that Monday is Monday, Friday is Friday, but actually visually, it's more compelling for them to sort of think about the red day, the orange day, the yellow day, etc. Mm -hmm, that makes sense. And the calendar starts not on Sunday, like a traditional calendar usually does, mm -hmm. but on Monday, the red day, because for young children, school begins, or time begins, the week begins on the day they come back to school. Okay. All right? So you can use this as also a way to just show them what's happening in the week. So if you're having a gym on the green day, you can run to wear their sneakers, or to designate on the blue day, you're going to go apple picking, or even for some community sort of things like on the brown day, it's going to be Tobin's birthday. And again, we see the pattern here. That's who it goes for. Pretty cool. Okay? And so once kids learn how to do this big calendar, which you can kind of just quickly go over the week in the morning meeting, you can make individual calendars for kids to help them organize time. So you could hang this in their cubby. This is for a child for whom he sees different specialists throughout the week. So in terms of being able to predict what's happening, he knows on the orange day, he sees Miss Patty for OT, and on the green day, he sees Miss Michelle. Speech. Awesome. Okay, Abby, so we've talked about the pattern system. Yes. Um, what are some other ways that I can uh, have my students or help my students feel safe? Well, another important aspect is have kids play simple games with each other. 
Okay. Both in the building blocks portion of Focus on K-1 and the literacy, there's a lot of games that kids have to play. But I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of times kids don't play board games anymore. Right? And there's a lot of important things that kids learn when they play in board games that can really help your community and help you feel safe. Taking turns, cause and effect, okay. having fun. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So here's just a suggested simple game that you can make for kids to learn how to do. Can take it out? Yes. Yes, so this is just a school bus. Mm -hmm. And game pieces that you can make, very simply, are of the kids themselves. And these are little binder clips. Okay. And, sure. And then all the kids do, they roll the dice. Get the number one, mm -hmm. and they put a kid on the bus. All right. And they can just keep playing this until the bus is filled, and then they can keep playing it to take the kids off the bus. Okay. So in this, they're just learning how to take turns, mm -hmm. how to cause and effect. And you can make this on a small scale so that kids can play this by themselves, okay. just learn the basic ideas of playing. Mm -hmm. Or, and as they get good at it, then they can invite a friend over to play with them. Sounds awesome.